be kind of a fun video that we're going to be creating today. And uh, I am creating this if we were running outbound campaigns for clay.com, what would we do? And I think it gives a lot of good insight into how crazy a campaign can get when you really understand your customer and your features, and then how you can show that off like crazy too. Um, there's a lot of AI prompting in it, and I'm going to try to go through as slowly as possible. We're going to go through the copywriting first so you can see what we're sending and then, or what we would be sending. And then we're going to go through the clay table as well so that you can see exactly how we make everything come to life. So let's jump in. A quick overview of the copywriting that we would be putting together. I say email idea one, two, three, and four. These all represent an email one. We just have different ideas going across it. If you follow our stuff, I, I very much think that email one is the most important email. I, I don't think that follow-ups are really that important. I would rather talk to new people than keep following up with the same people. So anyway, I put a lot of thought into each email one. And we'll get into run if numbers one, two, three, or four uh, later. So we have all of these subject lines. And then we're going to keep the first line the same for all of our campaigns. I was doing research and saw you have SDRs like SDR name over at company. And I had to imagine using outbound tactics to get new customers like the case study or customer type customers. So basically, if we can detect the case study, we're going to put the case study in here. If we can't detect a case study, we're going to just talk about generally what customer types they like to contact. I had to imagine you're doing things like this manually. And then we're going to generate uh, three ideas of things that they would, could be doing. We've built a platform that allows your team to do all these workflows completely automatically. Could I show you how we do it sometime? Great. Email idea two. This is very much leaning heavily into just a lead magnet. Nothing crazy. So I had to imagine you sell to customer titles and help them, blah, blah, blah. If I built a list of 5,000 ideal customers and included their valid work emails and mobile numbers, would that be enough to chat on a call? So just really, really leaning heavily into a lead magnet. This one is a lot of fun. Here, I want to use the tool to show the you know everything that that could be seen right you know in the tool. So basically, the whole premise of this is we're saying we've built a platform that is helping companies like Rippling and Ricotta automate their research, blah blah blah. For example, here's data we found about company name, and then it's data one, data two, data three. So then we're literally going to say, built with told us this, predict leads told us this. You know, we saw this on LinkedIn, blah, 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 blah. Could we show your team? Uh, could we show you how your team could leverage all these data integrations for their outbound research too? Then idea four, um, we actually built clay templates for people. So I did some research on your company and I'd be willing to bet that a great time for you to reach out to potential customers is when, and then we'll put the trigger. I built uh, a workflow for you that automatically does just that. And then we're gonna have an AI line explaining what it would look like. And then we're just basically saying, I don't want to break, uh, make you break an IT policy by sending a link without your permission. So let me know if I could send you the workflow for free. I'd probably A-B test this as well um, to see if they would just click on the link right there. And then follow-up ideas, the company analogy. So I just like doing this in email too. Basically just analogizing like, hey, the same way you guys help people optimize things, we help them optimize their outbound workflows, whatever it would be. We use AI for that. So let's jump over into the clay table now that we're three minutes into the copywriting and let's jump over to the clay table to talk about how we would actually put all this together. And so then this is our clay table where we're just starting with our normal stuff. I've hidden a lot of the columns. Oh, actually, let's just change it to. So we have all this data of, you know, where they live, emails and all this stuff, validating it. We're using Prospio to validate or to find even more emails. We're validating those. And we move through and then we have a master email column right here and we have all these enrichments. So the first thing that we need to make happen, right, is we need to first find the name of the SDR on the team. This serves two purposes. One, it allows us to send a pretty custom first line in the email. Two, it just qualifies them of whether or not they're doing outbound. Because if you have an SDR on your team, you're most likely doing outbound. And so we have this person's name. And then sometimes companies get a little finicky if you call a BDR an SDR or, or a SDR a BDR. So then we have this to determine if it's an SDR or a BDR so that we can write this line. I was doing some research and saw you have SDRs like Jasmine Brooks over at Fourth Suite. And this is literally just a formula where we just use the formula generator and we're just saying, you know, if name is not empty, concatenate this, blah, 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 blah. So 
super easy. Then we move on and we, we could talk about the second line first. So let's go to the second line. Where's our second line? Okay. So our second line, we have to generate an AI generation of who their target customers are, right? So that we can make this thing happen. So either we have a case study or we have the target customers. So here we're making a output of who their target customers are so that we could say, I imagine they're using outbound tactics to get new customers like Carvana. That's when we have the case study. I had to imagine they're using outbound tactics. Oh, wait, that's a case study. Outbound tactics to get new gaming enthusiast customers. I had to imagine you're using outbound tactics to get new customers like Arbery. I didn't like Carvana. Oh, that was the same thing. iRobot uses Pendo. We should check on that one. Ah, we have to add some AI here. Maybe I'll fix this in this video. Maybe not. So then uh, we'll move through. And oh, the AI ideas, right? So now, geez, I don't even know where the AI ideas are. Okay, so here we just use AI to generate outbound marketing ideas for them. And it's got bullet points and everything. So it looks really clean when we put it in the emails. And so our prompt looks something like this. Using the input, create three bullet points of creating marketing ideas for the company. Keep it each bullet point under 15 words. They must be marketing ideas that are possible for a cold email. Cool. So then that is how we made this campaign come to life. And now this campaign, we just have to really just get this line done here, right? And so we basically just literally prompt it and say, it looked like you sell to customer titles and help them with what they do. And then I say, notice the part in brackets. I need you to fill those parts in, keep the sentence under 15, 20 words. When you create customer titles, think slowly about what kind of customers this company sells to and the job titles and think about how they help those customers, right? So we only want those parts filled in and I want it to look exactly the same. The way we know that it did that is we set up a formula and this formula literally is just looking at this and is saying, um, does this column in right here, does it include, it looked like you sell to so that we were absolutely sure that it, they sold to them. And then we're good to go on that one. So we got that one working. Then this data one, this one was kind of fun to put together. So I wanted to show off that, you know, there's a lot of data that can be gained uh, in clay. So, but you want to use things that are, in order to get away with this, because if you were to say to this person, hey, you know, I use this platform and your mobile number is this, and then the mobile number is incorrect, they're going to hate your email, no matter how much you tried, right? And so you want, I tried to pick data providers that it would be cool to show them that we have the data, but there's no way they're going to know right off the top of their head, right? So we picked technology installed on their site. We picked company headcount uh, growth by percentage. And then you, I just put a little thing, like if there's a negative sign so that we don't reach out when they lost employees, you know, because I don't really want to say like, oh, you lost employees. And then we're talking about, this is the most recent post from the LinkedIn company page. And then here we're talking about how many jobs they have open as well. Here, we're trying to find their mobile number because I do want to include it if we have it. And we'll say, and a little bird, you told me your mobile number might be, you know, that number. Here, we're actually using a waterfall where, so I'm actually running all three integrations. I'm not just stopping if it finds one. And then what we're doing is we're using AI to basically pick up like, is are any of these numbers the same? And so see how these numbers are the same. So then that looks like it's a good fit. And see how these numbers are the same. So that's a good fit. Basically, it's like if, People Data Labs has it and Clay has it. It's probably their mobile number, right? And so that's our thinking behind that one. And then we get into the company analogy and some other stuff. So let's wind it back a little bit. So what we basically want to do is we're going to output this line. So it says built with says you have 483 technologies installed on the site. Amazing. So now we can put that in for data one right there. And this is also something that like, yeah, you like it's it's interesting to show them, but it's not like, like if you were to use web traffic, for example, and they know their web traffic, you know, the web traffic from similar web is directionally correct, but it's not totally correct. So, you know, like I said, I just want to use things that, you know, it's possible that it's true. It's possible that it's not true. 
This is the LinkedIn post. We'll get to the AI prompt later. This is the jobs one. And so then uh, literally for the jobs, we're like predict leads tells me you have about 24 open jobs right now. If it was a hundred, see how it says you have over a hundred open jobs right now because predict leads, the upper limit is, is just saying a hundred. So we got that one. And then this is the data too. Your company LinkedIn page recently posted about team members, Alex and Tristan speaking at the UBC gaming expo. Your company page recently posted about the true meaning of 99% accuracy in closed captions. Cool. So we're just showing them that we have all of this data on these things. Now, the final campaign that in my overview, I'm not even sure if I showed this. Oh, yeah, I did. Now, we have to get the trigger right and the, the AI generated line explaining the workflow. So this one, we created this lookup table where we would say, hey, this is the all of the uh, names of the options that we have. And then this is the templated table that goes with it, too. And then we basically just use AI to analyze the company and output what trigger would be best for them. So then we have tech on site or we'll have, oh, I guess all of these were tech on site. Interesting. So all of these turned out to be tech on site. And then we would say, I think you'd use this by identifying companies installing new tech on their site, suggesting integrations that enhance digital experience with full story. Perfect. That's an absolutely great campaign that they could totally run. So then what we would do is we would input and we would say potential customers is when they install new tech on site. I built a workflow for you that automatically does just that. And then it'll. I think you could use this by identifying companies, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to install that right there. And then boom, we're either going to send the link, which is why we need to be able to do the lookup or we'll wait for a response. And so then the lookup is super important. So we want to make sure that this response matches exactly what they have over here. So then with that, we just look up and then we get the clay table right here. Now, the big thing about all of this is I always, always, always want to run, even when we're doing four completely different campaigns, I want to run all of the campaigns from one clay table. And the reason is for that is because if something's not working, we could just cut it and that's totally fine. But if something is working, if all of them are working, we just want to keep uploading leads to all of them. And so I don't want to have to upload leads to one clay table and then come back and upload leads to another clay table and then another and another. I want to do everything in one table. But uh, we need to make sure that these run in order so we're not blowing through our data cost. So the first thing is we're going to run this one because this is the toughest one to run. And if we don't have all the data, it's not going to work. So we're running this one first. So you'll see we have this campaign to run thing over here. If it says true, that means we're running the data campaign. And it says true because over here. See, it says data campaign run. This is a formula literally checking is data one full of information, is data two full of information, is data three full of information. That's all we're checking here. So then once we get that true, that means we're going to run the data campaign. Now, Oftentimes when I'm trying to split campaigns evenly in between campaigns, well, smart lead campaigns, right? I'll usually just say, hey, you know, if this thing is true, output a number between one and three, right? So if the master email column has an email in it, output a number between one and three. That means that we will generally split the leads in thirds. So one third of the leads will go one place, another third of the leads will go another place, and another third of the leads will go another place. I didn't really want to do that because I think that this campaign is a banger, this campaign is a banger, and I think this campaign is okay. I'm a little bit worried about how we're going to unite the triggers and all of those things. So I basically made it so that we I outputted a random number between one and 10 so that now I can get if the number here is one through four, it's going to go to this campaign. If the number here is one is five through eight, it's going to go to that campaign. And if the number is nine or 10, it's going to go to the other campaign. So that way we get a 40, 40, 20 percent split. So now we're going to just dip our toes in this campaign and not go too hard with it. Um, and so, yeah, all that's left to do now is we just have to sync all the smart lead campaigns. One thing that we would do on top of this is, so we're going to add four columns for the smart lead campaigns. If something doesn't run for some reason, we're going to have a merge column 
at the end, making sure that we capture and make sure that everything ran. But if something doesn't have a master, if the, if it has a valid email and we have the SDR line, we should still send them an email. So we would keep all of those and we'd probably run a fallback campaign with a little bit less data. And um, that way we can you know, still hit a lot of contacts um, that are good to hit. And maybe we don't have the best messages for them, but we should still be talking to them. And so I hope this was a pretty good overview. I hope it gave you some good ideas and I hope it showed you how complex clay workflows can get. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, leave a comment if you did. And uh, if you got to this point of the video, I love it when people watch the full video. I, I, sometimes I'm blown away that people watch it. So really appreciate you guys and uh, can't wait for the next one.